What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So yeah, pretty successful weekend for my teams, except maybe my fantasy football team down by like about 25, 30 points after yesterday and only have my kicker tonight, which usually doesn't get that many points unless you're Miami yesterday who scored a record like 70 points or something like that against Denver, which was insane, which also didn't help me either because I traded away a Miami running back who ended up getting like 40 plus points in that game and then a guy I had drafted a rookie from Miami who I let go after like the first week because he wasn't really playing all of a sudden had like 50 or 60 points or something like that yesterday in that blowout win so of course yeah, it's not a lot of bad time management for me but still looking forward to the season and looking see what I could do with all this you know adversity coming this early in the season so definitely looking forward to see what can happen in the next couple of weeks hopefully it's not that bad of a season fantasy wise but it is a great season start off four and oh for my usc trojans they went out there in tempe arizona against arizona stadium i may have thought this was kind of like a cupcake game at some points like most recently i know months ago i kind of thought this could be a pretty crazy game especially because it's on the road it's arizona state weird stuff happens with arizona state i remember a hail mary happened where asu won that game against usc at usc so you know crazy things can happen even that crazy year when reggie bush and matt leinert went to asu they were down by quite a bit even in the fourth quarter came back to win that game so yeah and of course this game was pretty much a slugfest they Arizona State pretty much threw everything they got and were able to keep up with USC for quite a bit. USC still had a pretty significant lead, at least by a score or two most of the time, but it did get pretty close, I think, by like three points or something like that. But then once it did that, then USC was able to score pretty quickly, get a couple of defensive stops, and then able to, you know, continue to keep on going. I know a lot of people did really good, guys like. You know, Caleb Williams had like 320 yards total touchdown, total yards, excuse me, five total touchdowns. Marshawn Lloyd was pretty much the player of the game. He ran like 14, 15 times for 154 rushing yards. So that was good. Brendan Rice, the receiver, had seven catches on, with 133 yards and two touchdowns. So at least three people stepped up. A couple freshman mistakes out there, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, this was more of like the kind of Ben don't break as much mentality with the defense like it was last year. And at times that sucked because it made teams that shouldn't be as good look pretty good. I mean, Fresno State ended up shutting out this Arizona State team last week, but they were down to like their third or fourth string quarterback that happened during the game. And this this week they had a Notre Dame transfer who played pretty well against USC last season come in and have like the full week to prepare and all that stuff so that's why I really wasn't thinking it was going to be as easy as everybody thought but yeah just a late start and who knows if USC got in the, the night before if the players ended up sneaking out going to have fun just because they they thought it was going to be an easy game especially out there in a party school like ASU those players that go to that school are used to it <laughs> and they're used to that grind of partying and still going to school and practicing and all that stuff but USC players probably weren't I don't know I'm just making assumptions just to have some excuse for their performance but either way I still think it's a nice wake-up call because they get a pretty interesting Colorado team who did get pretty much blown out by Oregon this last weekend everybody knew that they were going to come down and the Cinderella story was going to end I was hoping it would be under USC's hands but Oregon kind of took care of that and Hopefully it diminishes them enough that USC can handle that win at Colorado because that's the tough thing too. It's going to be at Boulder. So we'll see what ends up happening with that game. But it was interesting stuff because it, once the AP poll came out yesterday, I did see that USC did move down a couple spots. I kind of thought they would move down because Ohio State had a big win against Notre Dame in the last second and they were right behind USC. But they also allowed Washington, another Pac-12 school, to jump up ahead of USC, which I guess maybe if you're looking at the teams they have both played, 
uh, Washington played Michigan State and was able to handle them. And they've been playing very well, winning quite a bit the first couple games like USC. But they've done it against maybe slightly better competition or at least one game better competition. So I guess I can understand it, but it is kind of weird because USC still did win. It's not like they lost and it wasn't as close like a three point one point game. But either way, it's still kind of taking the pressure off of USC, I think, of being one of those top five teams. You can only go down and lose once you're getting all that hype compared to coming up from behind and stealing one of those last four spots, in my opinion. So either way, still looking forward to this weekend at Boulder. It's a 9 a.m. start, which should be pretty crazy, but I still have confidence that USC will get that victory and head into their crazy gauntlet because I think the week after that is at Notre Dame. And then Washington comes and Utah comes to L.A., but then they got to go to Cal and probably still Arizona. And UCLA comes in later in the year. So, yeah, it'll be pretty, pretty crazy set of games coming up for my USC Trojans. And, yes, Duke did play this last Saturday as well against UConn. Everybody thought it was more like a they would prefer a basketball matchup than a football one, but... UConn is still slightly coming up with Jim Moore Jr. as their new head coach going into his second year, but Duke pretty much had this handled by halftime. I mean, they, they won this game 41-7, to never really in doubt, and a little bit of an extra sting for maybe the UConn basketball team was that Cooper Flagg, the number one player that everyone thinks is going to Duke, was in attendance while he was visiting UConn because they're trying to get him to sign there, but to have the team that he's kind of slightly leaning towards, you know, coming and demolish, even though it's a different sport. It's kind of at least boding well for Duke, in my opinion. But either way, yeah, that was a nice little dig at UConn. But yeah, these guys played great. Lally, Riley Leonard is still looking good. Running backs and receivers are still playing well, especially that defense also, because UConn can be a pretty, you know, not easy team to play because they kind of throw a lot of stuff out there, but they were able to get... It done, and I believe even ESPN's college game day, it's the first time they're going to be in Durham, North Carolina, at Duke's campus to promote that game because they're going to be playing Notre Dame, who did lose, but they're still like a number 11 team. And I think even in the AP poll, Duke did jump up to like number 18 overall, so out of the 20s and into the teens. So that's pretty good overall as, as a Duke football fan. I mean, a Duke fan in general... You know, like I said, I've just barely been covering, the, or at least watching the team, especially the football side of it. And now I'm fully entrenched because they are a really good and talented team. So hoping for more continued success, especially against a rival in Notre Dame as far as my other team, USC. So definitely looking forward to that. And yes, Chargers did finally get their first victory against the Minnesota Vikings. Sorry to my uncle's team, but... Yes, they were able to steal that win at the end on a defensive interception. 28-24 to was the final score. A lot of history was made in this game, especially by Keenan Allen and even Justin Herbert. Uh, this game also does suck fantasy-wise because I don't have Eckler, their main running back. And I picked up his backup, and they kept saying, yeah, this is going to be a great game for him. And, of course, all they did was throw the ball. That's why Herbert and Allen, you know, broke records and... You know, I got less than five points or something like that, fantasy-wise. But, yes, the history that was made, Keenan Allen had 18 receptions, which is a team franchise record, which is pretty crazy. I think he was even targeted like 20 times as well. He had over 215 receiving yards. He even had a 40, almost 50-yard passing touchdown to Mike Williams. So, yeah, him fantasy-wise was off the chain as well, but... Team-wise, yeah, this guy definitely stepped up because even Mike Williams later in the game, I did hear that he did go down as well with a knee injury. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do the MRI pretty soon today, but hoping for the best with that outcome. But Josh Palmer stepped up a bit. It's just in the tight ends as well, but it's just weird how the running game is becoming non-existent because all they did was rush for over 200-plus yards in that first game. And I guess they realized he could do that and still lose. So let's just use our, you know, franchise quarterback. And that's what they did because 
He ended up throwing for over 405 yards, had 40 completions. I don't even know how many times he threw it, but 40 completions with three total touchdowns and zero interceptions. He, he is one of seven players in NFL history to have that stat line, which is pretty crazy. But he also did end up getting the NFL history record of most completions in his first four years playing in the NFL. So that's obviously going to keep going up because you have another, what, he played four games and they're 17. So at least, I could do that. It's like at least 12 more games or something like that. Or 13, excuse me. So yeah, he's definitely going to add to that historical feat and make it definitely a lot harder for other teams to or other players to catch up to that record. But it does help when you have a guy like Keenan Allen who you trust quite a bit and he definitely trusts him in this game. And that was also the only sour part was that the guy I was playing in fantasy ended up having Keenan Allen. So it was a sort of like sweet and sour events that was happening to me in fantasy and he ended up having like 50 points or something like that so yeah it's pretty crazy so once a guy player ends up doing that for your team you're most likely going to win and sadly it was against me but I'll take it with their first victory and people talking less crap about the Chargers going into this week and obviously people could have talked crap because I heard towards the end of the game that last drive the Chargers had like a fourth and one they decided to go for it <clears throat> didn't get it and had to play defense, but they were still willing to do that no matter what because they were up by four in that situation and not three. If it was three, they probably do punt it or try to get points out of it, whatever. But yeah, either way, it was still something that they, they could have, you know, blamed Brandon Staley for and all this stuff. It probably could have been a fireball offense because it's, you know, him making that choice, but the team was behind him. So either way, they still had his back. So yeah, thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great day. Bye. Fight on. Bolt up. And let's go Duke.